Welcome to a video on the massively popular Honda Twin Clutch motor, which is essentially the dominant horizontal engine around the world and the backbone of virtually all semi-automatic engines in existence today, including knockoff manufacturers. Here we are going to be looking at things from an engineering perspective, however, meaning we are going to be comparing this engine to the previous version, the single clutch version, which is this motor, and the motor this channel has largely focused on in terms of rebuilding and repairing. In this video we are going to explore the mechanical differences between the two engines, explore the possible reasons why Honda switched to this design, and the possible advantages this engine has over its predecessor. Before we begin, let me make a note by saying there are currently three iterations of twin clutch motors out there by Honda, but I won't go into detail on all of them, only outline the basics. First is the motor we will focus on, and that is the original twin clutch engine, manufactured from around 1988 to around 2005. Second I call the small three bolt engine, because it has three frame mounting bolt holes. This was made from around 2006 and is still being produced today. It is available in 49, 97 and 108 cc variants, found mainly in the Wave series and the current Super Cub series including the new 2018 versions, and it is the updated version which shares virtually nothing in common with the original twin clutch engine, but in short it has been reworked from the ground up as a 100cc-ish engine rather than being a built up 50cc engine like this predecessor. And the third I call the big 3 bolt engine, made from around 2003 and still being produced today. It is the very beefy and heavy, might I add, 125cc twin clutch engine which has nothing in common with either of the two previous motors. This engine is found in the big wave, which is the 125 and the MSX or Grom, except that that is the manual clutch version. But for the sake of time and with the objective of understanding the basics of the engine, we'll be focusing this video on the original 88 series as mentioned, the original twin clutch motor that was supposed to replace the 50cc engine it was based on. And when I say meant to replace, I say that because in Japan where it was first introduced, it never really caught on and strangely took a back seat to the single clutch motor for whatever reason. Only around 2011, with the introduction of the fuel injected Super Cub 110 and 50 variants, has the twin clutch motor gained traction in Japan, and has now finally supplanted the beloved single clutch motor which ended production in 2012 after 40 years of production. Around the rest of Asia, however, the twin clutch Honda motor became a massive success right away, so and essentially Honda has come to dominate the semi-auto scooter market with this style of motor, which I suppose is a testament to how good it actually is. This is probably why some aftermarket manufacturers have copied it part for part, and attempted to launch their own vehicles in hopes of replicating Honda's success, but to little or no avail. Universally around the world, aftermarket engines are seen as vastly inferior and rubbish, often experiencing catastrophic failures with relatively light usage and low mileage. Why this is we might explore in another video, but the main takeaway from here is that design isn't everything, it is only part of the equation to making anything that is good. For now, however, let's look at the basics and compare it to the motor it was supposed to replace for the Japanese market. Before we look at the differences, however, let's look at how both motors are the same. Both engines are single-cylinder, air-cooled, overhead cam two-valve motors, magneto-style CDI ignition, a dog-receiver-style gearbox like most motorcycles, and are for the most part carbureted, although the newer style 2003-125 and 2005-110 versions are sometimes fuel injected. Interestingly, the original twin clutch engines used almost the exact same engine case as the single clutch engine, which means that bigger top ends and longer stroke crankshafts can in fact be used to build up a single clutch bike, all with Honda factory parts, which I think is rather neat. I've done so a few times actually, and let me tell you, it's fantastic. In terms of functionality, the operation of the engine is identical to the original single clutch motor. 
the engine automatically disengages and engages at a standstill. The gear changer automatically disengages and re-engages the clutch when shifting gears. And the centrifugal style oil filter is still in place on the crankshaft, seen here. The only main omission from this setup is the elimination of the slipper clutch, which I suppose Honda saw as unnecessary for small scooters like these. But if both engines operate the same and provide similar outputs, why would Honda then bother switching to the twin clutch system in the first place when the combination basket is provably reliable and a steady performer? Now, while I haven't personally talked to engineers, having worked on motorcycles for a decade and a half now, I believe I can explain the reason for the change, and the story goes as follows. Now, when the original single clutch mechanism was introduced, it was only designed for a 50cc engine and it worked very well for some four-awed horsepower that the engine produced, but as people began demanding a higher output, the clutch pack had to be modified to accept more power, and it was, and it actually handled the power quite well while still proving to be reliable. However, by the time 90ccs had been reached, which was almost double the original output of the 50, this was nearing the end of the clutch pack's limits, and I would know because I like to modify these motors quite a bit, and I can say with a reasonable amount of confidence that the C90 clutch pack is right on the limit of its long-term reliability ability, if you will. Now, if the bike is used as a light commuter without many heavy loads, the clutch functions very well and is still reliable. Any more than that, however, say if you frequently carry two people and want more power down the line out of your engine, you are going to run into problems as you will hit the mechanical limits of your clutch pack. And Honda seems to think so too, as their MD90, the posty bikes, which carry a much heavier load than the C90 does, uses a much more robust clutch pack with more clutch plates, heavier springs and stronger weights, not to mention a bigger bell and a bigger clutch cover to compensate for the size. So in order to maintain that level of over-engineered reliability that Honda is known for, there are two options that could have been taken. One, the MD90's heavy clutch pack could be used on the revised engine, or a different system altogether could be implemented. While it might seem wise to make use of the pre-existing MD90 pack that was available and widely used on the export 90cc bikes of the day, there was another type of clutch that Honda could use from its toolkit, and that was the more conventional basket type clutch from its SS and CD series manual bikes. Personally, and keep in mind this is my own conjecture, I believe they decided to opt using the SS and CD's style clutch for its new engine so they could both use a common architecture. So rather than requiring different gearboxes, crankshafts, foot pegs, etc. between the two bikes, all that would need to be different is the clutch assembly on the crankshaft, and the rest of the engine and drivetrain could remain the same. Any manufacturer knows that the more common parts you use, the higher degree of efficiency you can build things. The other added benefit is that the clutch could be made to accept more power much easier because of the nature of its design, so larger displacement engines could be compensated for easily in the future. Again, personal conjecture, but from a manufacturing standpoint and also keeping true to company values, it seems to make sense. Could be wrong though. Regardless of the reason, the result is what you see in front of you, and the design has proven massively successful over the years, and it is essentially the clutch setup of choice across virtually all manufacturers of semi-auto engines. So now we understand the possible reason for the change, that begs the question, are there any other advantages to this setup as well? Well, truth be told, in terms of advantages, not much if you're talking stock performance. Some I've heard say the twin clutch is smoother in terms of changing gears, but for me, I personally don't notice that much of a difference. The main benefit I have seen, however, is the ease of being able to work on and repair these engines from a novice point of view. Everything in front of your eyes makes sense, if that makes sense, and the modifications for more power are very easy to perform, and you can have some immense clamping power, far more than anything else the engine would ever hope to produce. Now what does this mean for you? Well for drag racers it's nice to know you can modify your bike easily to handle massive force power and for people where both manual and semi-auto clutches are common, 
A shop only needs to carry one set of plates and springs, which is also nice for customers as well. But stock performance-wise, unless you're getting nitpicky and talking about the engagement point of the twin clutch being slightly smoother because of reduced RPM it operates at, then there's no real difference. However, rest assured, the twin clutch is a very capable and reliable motor, and has likely moved far more freight than it ever was originally designed to carry. I guess it just goes to show how much it matters to get a good manufacturer behind whatever product you're using, because when you let the penny-pinching greedy people take charge of operations, it all eventually goes south. So I hope this video was informative and interesting, and I hope you learned something from it. So until next time, goodbye.